Hey guys, I'm hoping to finish off this RCA 630TS project in this video. I already went through the basic alignments that would be the video and audio IF, and here's where things stand. Picture on channel 3 is great. And the volume is fine, but there's a little background noise. And as I adjust the fine tuning, background noise doesn't really change that much until I tune really far off the station. So as I'm turning this, not a whole lot of change. So I went through to the VTVM type audio alignment. Um, I guess next up I'll try doing the visual where you sweep and look at the S curve on a scope. Aligning this set is not the easiest thing by any means. Uh, I'd say it's easily the most difficult to align set that I've tackled so far. Reason being is that there's a lot you gotta do. Uh, for almost every step you have to change where you're feeding signal in and where you attach your uh, VTVM, especially for the audio. So you can see here for the first two steps you put your signal in there and then you gotta change it and change it again and you gotta move your VTVM from point B to point C to point D and some of them are even more of a pain than that because for example this first one point B Point B is inside of a shielded area, and they have a note here, don't remove the shield, instead attach a 1 meg resistor and feed it through a hole, and then you can inject your signal. So, I had to remove the shield, attach a resistor, reinstall the shield, feed my signal in, uh, tweak that one coil, and then remove the shield again, remove the resistor, reattach the shield, and then move on to the next step. So, uh, if I have to redo that again, I'm not going to be too happy. And all the coils seem to peak just like they should and the traps are working right. And I'm pretty sure that the video IF is working right, although I did not visually verify it. Because again, it's a pain. This isn't too bad. You just feed the signal into the antenna terminals and adjust these coils for a min or a max. But to do a visual overall check, you have to take a tube and modify it and stick it into the set. So, for example, they say you have to pin bit, pin uh, bend rather bend pin seven at a right angle, and you have got these various components and replace one of the six J sixes on the tuner with it. I haven't gone through all that. All the coils seem to peak fine. The picture seems great, so I'm not inclined to do it if I don't have to. All right, so that's that. So, aside from the sound, I'm perfectly happy with channel 3. Other channels, uh, got some issues though. Let's see if I can find a diagram that shows we were just the channel slug. It's here somewhere. Here it is. Alright, so, in addition to aligning the set, I also wanted to cheat, tweak these channel oscillator slugs. So, we've got channel 1, 2, so we're on channel 3 right now. I've already tweaked the slug. I put the fine tuning in the center of its rotation and tweaked that slug so I got a good picture and sound right there. Channel 4 got some issues. So the box I'm using right now outputs on channel 3 or 4. It's switchable. So if I got channel 4 now. Sound is just the same as channel 3, a little bit of background noise, otherwise it's fine, but look at the picture. A lot of, uh, well, I guess you'd call it snow. It's like it has a weak signal. No matter how I tweak or adjust it, that's the best picture I can get. So, I'm thinking there's got to be something else going on. I think under here, inside the tuner, there are some more slugs. And I'm hoping one of them is something like an antenna. A trimmer that I can tweak because that should definitely be better than that. Now here comes another puzzling thing. So channel 5, channel 6. This is a good old over the air channel 6 transmission we've got in my area. Not coming in well at all. Now, to be fair, I don't have an antenna hooked up, so I'll just pop this off 
and just hook up an alligator clip to it or two. Well, I'll tell you right now, it doesn't come in well. Video is not so hot, although it's a weak channel, so it's not necessarily unexpected. But normally I can get audio great. And right now, it just stinks. Alright, so I want to go to tweak the channel oscillator slug for it. Just one problem, there isn't one. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So where are 13 and 6? And now I can understand that why they might not want to mount them here is because they'd be covered up by this mounting bracket. So I gotta dig to the service info more. They must be somewhere. Uh, they're probably underneath the chassis inside the tuner somewhere. There's this metal plate that wraps around and covers the whole tuner. I'm probably gonna take that off. So I'm hoping with that cover off and uh, researching the service in info more, I can find the channel six oscillator slug and uh, hopefully find an antenna trimmer so I can get channel four working better. It turns out that yes, the oscillator slugs for channel 6 and 13 are underneath the tuner, so I removed a cover plate and a whole bunch of coils under here. This one, actually these two are for channel 6. I'm not sure why it has two when the others only have a single one. And channel 13 also has two. And they say you should keep them at approximately the same level. In other words, if you have to turn one say uh, back it out a quarter of an inch you should back out the other one a quarter of an inch as well now these others are for uh, the mixer I believe that there is not one adjustment for each channel for the antenna and it also says that these should very rarely need any adjustments so I'm a little leery of touching any of them so uh, as far as what, uh, what channel 4 uh, might have wrong with it, you know, leave that alone for the time being. Come back to it later after I see if I get channel 6 working and get the sound working better. Alright, so, I'll get my alignment tool here on that channel 6 oscillator. Alright. That seems to be making things worse. There's a radio station I'm picking up there. Try going the other way. Oh yeah, there it is. It's only off maybe a quarter of a turn. That's all it takes. I noticed that once you lock the oscillator slug in, you can turn the fine tuning quite a bit and the station stays locked in pretty well. And actually I should have re I should readjust this because I had, had this fine tuning all the way at one extreme when I did that. Uh, but regardless, I'm glad it was just a minor tweak to get it tuned in. I also noticed that the this doesn't have that same background noise that I get on channel 3. Huh. Now as far as why did I have to make that adjustment in the first place? Well, this is the oscillator tube, 6J6. And these are also 6J6s. One is the RF amp, one is the mixer, and this one's the oscillator. I know I took all three of these out to test them. I can't recall if any were weak or not, but regardless, odds are pretty good I didn't put this, the same tube back into the socket. And they say in the service info, you may very well have to tweak those oscillators if you change out this tube. Because there are internal capacitances between the various pins and elements, and there are production differences in these tubes. So, 
the tubes uh, if it's off a little bit in its capacitance versus the one that was in there would throw all of the channel uh, frequencies off a little bit so you don't need to go in there and tweak them so all right that was a simple enough fix <laughs> Luckily, setting it up for visual alignment of the audio wasn't too bad. I didn't have to go ticking inside of the shield or anything. Just had to feed a swapped RF signal into the grid of the first sound IF tube. I got my detector probe on the output the ratio detector, and here's what I've got. So that is the typical FM S curve. Now that weird squiggly thing going on there, that is 21.25 megahertz. That should be right in the center there. So things are off to the side a little bit. And it should be symmetrical about the axis. So it's a little bit higher on this side than it is low down here. So I need to kind of shift things over and down a little bit. But as it is, it's actually not too bad. All right, that's the best I could get. So, got a marker dead center and equal amplitudes on either side. And that line's supposed to be as straight as you can make it. So, uh, I got to go on to the next two stages now, which is just peaking the response at 21, 25 for a couple coils. And then I hook up a signal back and let's hear how it sounds. There's still just a little bit of background noise, but I can live with it, so <laughs> I'm going to call this good enough, and the picture's fantastic. And this is just with a little touch here, too. So, what remains? Well, still that issue with channel 4. At least I think there is. I'll double check that. But... As long as channel 3 is coming in pretty good. Well, yeah, channel 4 is exactly terrible. Anyways. So I think I can let that go too. All I really need is one channel that looks good anyway. We clobbered We clobbered nobody. Alright, so what does that leave? Well, there's the cabinet. Now, the cabinet that this set came with, if you recall, I had some issues with the top lid where the one that came with it was walnut, whereas the rest of the cabinet is mahogany, and I found one off of eBay, but it was in rough condition, I'm trying to refinish that. Well, in the meantime, I do have another 630 TS that has a really, really nice cabinet. So what I'm going to do is put this chassis in that cabinet, so I've got one really nice, complete set. Someday I'll get around to fixing up the other cabinet and restoring the other chassis, but right here now I can get one set completely done and chuck it off my list and get back to other projects. So here's the cabinet on its original stand that I am going to slide that chassis into. So the first vintage TV set that I ever got. And I've never done anything with it except touch up the cabinet a little bit. It's all the original finish. Also give me a chance to finally take a better look at this chassis. Took a brief look ages ago when I got this. I know the CRT has some life left, uh, but beyond that, uh, I just took some reference photos. All right, I got the picture tube and chassis out of the cabinet without too much trouble. Remember, if you ever work on a 630TS or a 721, picture tube has to come out the front before you take the chassis out the back. The uh, CRT is only supported by some flimsy brackets up front and the chassis in the back. So if you pull the chassis out with the CRT in there, it will fall down and very likely break. 
Alright, so here is the other unrestored 630TS chassis. Nice tinge of green. I'm sure it's cadmium corrosion. And at first I was a little ticked off when I saw that the, one of the traps is missing, but I found it flopping around inside the cabinet. Looks like there's a little chip on the core, but I doubt that would affect it much. I think that's the same one. Yeah, it is. It's the same one that was loose in my other sets. So. Uh, maybe that was a common issue. I don't know. The other two seem all right. And uh, let's see. I do believe, yeah, that is the address where I got this set. It was at the same uh, address its entire life. I bought this set from the daughter of the original owner. Yeah, this one's a bit newer than my other one, though. Serial number is 61,036 on the other one. It's, uh, I think, 21,000 or thereabouts. And uh, I noticed some minor differences on the cabinet, at least. The channel plate on the cabinet on this one is plastic, whereas on the older one, it's metal. Let's take a peek underneath this chassis. Pretty much the same as the other one. A few caps have been replaced, like this guy. The rest look to all be the same brands like in the other set. Mostly Aerovox, some Mica Molds. Some of the resistors look a bit different though, like these. They look like a slightly different type. And I'm thinking now that this is the original power resistor. If you recall, and I said I just restored, there was a big green resistor in there. Which might also have been the original, because I believe I was contacted by another 630TS and it said that he had a big green resistor in his. But I've also seen this type on uh, other early sets. In fact, there's one like it right here in this admiral, right down here. So they were definitely using that type of a uh, high wattage resistor back in the late 40s. Alright, so I don't know when I'll get around to restoring this one. <laughs> the one I just did uh, was uh, quite quite a lot of work, I gotta say. I'm happy it's working in the end, but uh, I think it was the most challenging TV I've restored so far. I'm tempted on this one to not restuff the caps and just put all new caps in there. I just, uh, not so much that it was a ton of work to do, but when you put the new smaller caps in, it just frees up so much space underneath the chassis. It makes it easier to work on. Alright, so now I've got this opened up. I guess I'll clean it out a bit with a damp rag. Let's see this one at the in here. This was down in a basement for decades when I got it. And I only uh, did a brief cleaning a few years ago when I got it. Otherwise, it's in pretty darn good shape. Considering it looked disgusting when I got it, there was like a eighth of an inch of just dust and debris on it. What I did in the center panel was I, after cleaning it down good, I used some steel wool and, uh, and gojo to clean all the gunk off. Is I did a light sanding and then put some clear lacquer over it, and I think I will do that on these two panels as well. And then the sides and so on. Maybe touch up here and there. A little bit of the dark lacquer is chipped away. And here's that plastic bezel I was talking about. Here's the earlier metal type. Decals are in pretty good shape on this set. Except, you know, as you would expect from people constantly turning the volume control. It's worn off a bit there, and these are a tad worn. I'm pretty sure reproductions are made of these. In fact, I know they are, but I'm not sure how good a match they are. I'll order up a couple sets. For sure on my other cabinet they're so deteriorated they had to be replaced. On this set I'd be inclined if I'm going to replace them at all. Maybe leave 
this one in there because it's so nice. I'm trying to carefully scrape this off while not damaging the finish below. I'm going to put on a new decal and clear coat over it. And then there's the stand, which definitely needs some help, especially this plywood shelf. It's delaminating. I'm sure it got damp at some point. Use some paint. Nothing special, it's just a plywood base that just had some flat, dark brown paint on it. Legs and the uh, cross pieces. Might have just been stained. Maybe a little toner. I think these are real mahogany. I could use a little bit of touching up too, but that's something I'm going to do right now. Once I realized how light this cabinet was with the chassis and CRT out of it, I couldn't resist taking it up to the attic for a little touch up. So for now, my plan is to just do these two top side panels. That's why I've masked off everything else. So I've already sanded these down with 320 grit and wiped them down with mineral spirits. And now I'm going to spray them with some Duft Lacquer Sanding Sealer. Probably do a couple coats, some sanding, see how well the voids are filled in, do any touching up as needed. This is a little bit of alligatoring. Not bad though. And there are a few chips here and there. Very small ones though. So once I get that all squared away, I will use some Mohawk gloss lacquer, good nitrocellulose based stuff.